Hi everybody, welcome to another MIRAC tutorial. Uh, today uh, I wanted really to address uh, beginners which are approaching uh, MIRAC for the first time. So um, if you already know how to use MIRAC these videos, then not for you. On the other hand, if it is the first time that uh, um, you're using MIRAC, uh, you might find yourself in a situation that you don't really uh, understand how to navigate uh, the application. It's fair to say that uh, MIRAC is a fantastic uh, app in iOS, probably the first of its kind, with that breadth in terms of modules. Um, but uh, the manuals is probably not the strongest point uh, point of MIRAC. Having said that, there are a number of tutorials, many, which you can find uh, on YouTube, uh, some of mine, of course, under the uh, Sound for More YouTube channel. So when you <clears throat> launch MIRAC, you are presented with the iOS uh, um, file system view. And this is very useful, handy, because you can decide which location to use to record your patches. And in this case, I have a location called Sound for More, and inside that I have a folder which is uh, called My Rack Patches. And very much uh, this is what, um, you know, is your, is your iOS file systems. So if you know how to use that, you know how to create folders. And I suggest you create a folder on uh, your uh, iPad and then you also set that as a favorite so that it will appear here. Um, <clears throat> when you have done that, um, you find a create patch icon, which you can use to start the creation of a patch. You can also do that clicking on the plus sign here. <clears throat> so let's create a patch. When you do so, my rack will present you with this view and um, <clears throat> as you can see, it has given already a name to uh, to the patch you're creating, which is here. And um, if you click on my patches here, it will close the patch and it will exit uh, um, my rack. Of course, you can click again the patch you just created to go back to edit the patch. So first thing first, <clears throat> This is the view, as you can see, and it's meant to resemble the uh, a set of racks. <clears throat> um, you can use uh, your uh, um, fingers to pinch in and out, as I'm doing now. And as you can see, you can really, you have a lot of space which you can use to create your patches. So let's go back, pinch in, and focus then again um, on the initial view we had earlier on. <clears throat> of course, you can pan left and right using your fingers. Okay. Um, <clears throat> by default, you have uh, a um, plugin which is called uh, Audio Out, and this is created by default. And this is um, your interface to uh, the audio hardware of your iPad. So you have a left channel and a right channel, as you would um, expect when you work with um, audio. So you can click, hold, and move. And of course, if you're using a mouse, as I'm doing in, uh, at the moment, and you can move it left and right, also up and down. Okay, in a different uh, position, like in a dip, like if you were using different shelves. Um, <clears throat> you can double click on it, and here it will give you access to the view menu, and it also will give you an option to disconnect all the cables. If you click on the view menu, it will give you a basic, uh, uh, probably more set of notes, really, uh, for that module. In some cases, those notes are actually quite good, and you have, uh, um, you know, as, uh, almost like a menu. In other cases, you have links to other uh, uh, web pages where you can find more information about the uh, the modules or that you're using. <clears throat> In this case, it says it's a MIDI and audio pack. It's an audio output, uh, and it says you normally do not need to add this module manually because it is added by default by the application. 
So let's click on them. <clears throat> let's move on. We have a plus sign here. If you click on the plus sign, <coughs> here you get to a screen <coughs> where starting from the top left, you have the selection of packs or tags, which is a different way of classifying all uh, your different uh, modules or plugins which you can use inside the uh, MI rack. And uh, when you've chosen one, like for example the MIDI and audio, which we were just referencing now, you can uh, then select uh, the module um, that you want to use. And when you selected it, of course, you can click Add to Patch and it will be added inside uh, your patch. So, for example, if I want to use an audio in module, I select and I click on the Add to Patch and here it will appear. Okay, this is a module actually which is used to uh, for IAA only purposes, as it says here. Uh, so it will take uh, the audio coming from, for example, from another uh, um, app using IAA, and that will come through the left and right channel, uh, and then you can connect that to other modules. So go directly, for example, to the audio out. But that uh, for uh, other tutorial. If you double click on it and you click on manage, you can disconnect the cables, but you can also delete it. So let's click on delete, as you can see that has now disappeared. And that is similar to clicking on the audio out, viewing, uh, sorry, viewing the menu, um, and selecting uh, the option if that, of course, was available by this case, as it is the audio out by default is not there. But you normally find that uh, every module, so let's, for example, add the VCO. Um, when you double click on it, you will have a manage uh, menu, uh, which will give you standard uh, set of uh, functionality uh, like uh, delete. Next, we have the CPU usage in percentage, which is very useful if you want to understand how your iPad is doing, as your CPU is doing with the patch you created. Uh, as the patch becomes uh, uh, more complex, that percentage will rise, of course. And that gives you an idea, really, of if you're reaching limitations uh, based on the hardware that you have available. Um, for the purpose of underst uh, understanding the other uh, functionality, um, on this window so let's add another module uh, let's uh, stick to a vco uh, voltage control oscillator and cl let's click on the patch um and also let me uh, click on this button here to pause the execution of the patch so you don't hear audio for now um as you can see in this case i have added uh, a another module which i will explain in a moment so going back to the different um, options on, on the top toolbar, if I click on this one, it becomes active and I can move the module. So I click and I move um, easily, and which is very, uh, very useful. Of course, you can do uh, the same uh, uh, without that functionality uh, active, but you have to click and hold, and then you can move, as in this case. If you don't click and hold, then you have an effect of panning left and right, etc. So this is uh, quite handy if you want to click and move the just a module quickly in another position, and this becomes also very useful when you have a complicated patch. <coughs> Um, as you can see in this uh, module, uh, there is uh, a dial which you can move and you can see the speed to which I can move the dial. Okay, if I click on this icon, which stands for precision, I can actually make fine adjustment. So you find the movement is very, very slow. But that's very good if I want to make a very fine little adjustment. Next, uh, we have a learning uh, functionality, and this is used if you have a MIDI controller or an external controller attached to your iPad, so you can map 
um, some of the external um, knobs, uh, sliders, uh, or buttons directly to some uh, of the uh, controls on the module itself. Of course, at the moment, I don't have a, a MIDI controller attached to it. And uh, anyway, I already recorded a tutorial on how to use this. So just browse or look at my Sound for More channel and you'll find uh, a simple tutorial on how to learn <coughs> and associate you really MIDI, external MIDI uh, controllers, knobs, button, etc. to the functionality in the specific mod you are using. So let's click on the learn button again to disactivate it. <coughs> However, play um, icon, which you can click, it will play the patch and will execute the patch. And of course, I can also pause it. So for example, let's connect <coughs> this Volta control oscillator to the audio out. It's very simple to do so. In this section here, you find some input on this side and also some outputs on uh, the other side. Uh, let's forget for a moment the input here, which you can see they're also in a different color. Let's connect this output here, just click and hold. You can see there is a cable. Uh, it's like patching in real life. If you had the uh, Eurorack um, hardware, obviously this will be very familiar to you. So I can drag these to the left output channel. Okay, so nothing will happen at the moment because the patch is not being executed. So if I click play, you will hear uh, only on one of your channel uh, a sine wave, which is being generated by this module. Um, I can click again on one end point and I can disconnect it as you can see and connect it to the other channel as well i can uh, drag from this output channel the left in this case dragging again to the same output from the vco module and in this case i'm using this sine wave output from the vco to go to the left and also to the right channel um if you recall earlier on, uh, I showed you some uh, other functionality to disconnect cables, but I really didn't show you how it works. So if I double click on the VCO and I go to manage, I have uh, um, an option here to disconnect the cables. And I have it also here on the audio out, uh, which is a disconnect cable. So if I click on it, you can see I disconnect the cables linked to the audio out. Okay, in this case, uh, both of them. Um, let's reconnect them and let's go to the spanner here menu, which is your settings. So here you have a selection to lock modules. If you click on it, you cannot move anymore your module. You can still, of course, pan left and right, etc. But you can still adjust your knobs and do whatever you need to do. But uh, the modules are not moving. So let's go back and um, unlock the lock modules option. I can hide the cables. As you can see, the cables have disappeared. Uh, this can be very useful when uh, your patch is very complicated and uh, you will absolutely find uh, this uh, uh, really useful as you progress uh, with your understanding uh, of how to use and create patches in uh, my rack. You can enable or disable one finger pan, and it's something that has been added in one of the latest release, which can be handy, it depends on your preferences, of course, whether you want to use one finger or one to pan. You have a couple of options uh, for zoom. You can reset the zoom, like so. You can say fit it to two rows, and um, of course, that's what it does. Um, you have further settings down here. For example, you can enable the background audio. So when you quit MI rack, if your patch is playing or was playing, it will continue to play. You can also adjust your audio buffer in samples. So if you start to hear some crackles, some sorry, crackles, some cracks in the noise that has been uh, uh, produced, just uh, change the audio buffer. And then you can enable or disable the CPU meter. Um, media devices, very useful. You can enable 
or disable your network session or your virtual input as input devices and in other devices if you have them connected to your iPad or you can also choose a Bluetooth device in this case you can see my Akai which I normally use and also other interesting uh, other appliances that you might have near um, your iPad so moving on we have a quick help um, option as you can see it shows you what um, uh, what you can do here you can click again to exit that and then at the very bottom we have the acknowledgments here we are and feedback support which will open your mail application your default mail application and will allow you to create an email to send to request feed, to provide feedback and request support so <clears throat> let's uh, go back here and let's have a look uh, at this first module and I'm going to do that in the sense of introducing you to the world of MIRAC so let's zoom in again so you have a better view um, as I said earlier, this is a, a voltage control oscillator module. Let's double click on it and let's view the manual. And it gives you an explanation of what uh, uh, the VCO is, uh, the feature which it has. It can do simultaneous square, so triangular sine wave outputs, which you can see uh, here. Okay. Uh, that's traditional exponential linear free zero uh, frequency modulation FM. You can do pulse width modulation, sometimes replicated as PM modulation of the square wave only, of course. You can do have a hard sync. You can have a slow uh, LFO mode, low frequency oscillator, and you can do anti aliasing by a CPU efficient combination of band limiting of sampling. It gives you other information. The main frequency knob is calibrated in volts, and uh, after all, this is a volt control, uh, control oscillator. So, um, the frequency of this oscillator is controlled by the input in terms of voltage that you provide. In this case, it goes by from minus four to plus six, which corresponds to the nodes of C0 to C6. In other words, when there is no volt, zero volt, uh, which is the standard position, this corresponds to and the node C4 in your keyboard, for example, in a piano keyboard, which corresponds to 261.63 Hz per cycle per second. And so on and so forth, so you can find uh, um, more information in here. As you can see, it's, uh, uh, it's not a, a very big manual, and uh, the pack is a bog audio. Um, <clears throat> So, um, this is where you would adjust uh, your voltage, as we said, zero volt stand for C4, as it's written here. If you double click on it, it will uh, go back to the zero volt uh, by default, as it is by default. This is where you make some fine adjustment, you enable the slow mode, as it was described uh, in the manual. This is only enabled when um, the patch is being played. You can do phase modulation here. Yeah, this is your pulse width modulation. You can do frequency modulation, and here you can have uh, your exponential or linear settings as just described in the manual. Here you have the input for phase modulation, frequency modulation, your hard sync, and notice your voltage octave, which you can use from other modules to drive effectively the pitch in volts, which by now you would understand that the oscillator will play. Here we have the different outputs, as we just described, square, um, sine wave, uh, triangle, sawtooth, etc. I hope you find uh, the tutorial good as an introduction, and uh, uh, this hopefully help you to get uh, into the world of MIRAC. See you next time. Bye.